All right, in this video, I'm going to go over a few of the questions from the section 2.7 homework, um, specifically number 10 through 14. Now, I realized after the fact that I didn't actually go through these questions in class, so I want to go over um, how to solve these types of uh, questions. All right, so the first one here, I think this one is like number 10 in the homework. Um, it says absolute value of x plus 2 is greater than or or just greater than negative 1. Now, if we recall, anytime we have an absolute value expression, um, that is going to equal either 0 or some positive value. So because this says x plus 2, absolute value of x plus 2 is greater than a negative number, what we would say is any, any x value that we substitute in here is going to make this expression or this inequality true. So let's just pick a few x values and see what happens. Uh, let's say if x is, I don't know, 10. If we plug in 10, we're going to have 10 plus 2. Is that greater than negative 1? Well, I get absolute value of 12 greater than negative 1. 12 is greater than negative 1, so that would mean 10 would make this inequality true. Let's do a couple more. Let's say if x is 0. I would have 0 plus 2 greater than negative 1, absolute value of 2 greater than negative 1. I've seen if this is true. 2 is greater than negative 1, so that would mean x equals 0 would make this inequality true. Now let's pick a negative number. How about x equal to negative 5? If we do this, we're going to say negative 5 plus 2 absolute value. Is that greater than negative 1? Well, I get negative 3. Absolute value of that is going to be 3. That is greater than negative 1. So just based on these three examples, it would appear that any number we plug in for x is going to make this true. Um, and this is, in fact, the case. So if we were to graph this on a number line, we would say, well, from negative infinity to positive infinity, every value is going to be shaded. So if we wanted to write this in interval notation, we're going to say, all values between negative infinity and positive infinity would make this true. So anytime we end up with a solution, I'm sorry, I should say, we will end up with a solution in this form anytime we have an absolute value where we are greater than a negative number. If we have an absolute value expression that's greater than or greater than or equal to a negative value, um, we will always have all real numbers like this. All right, this next one, I think this might have been similar to number 11 or 12. Um, so we have an absolute value inequality. When we are trying to solve an absolute value inequality, we want to isolate the absolute value expression first. Here, this is all already isolated. It's by itself on the left-hand side. So what we do is we take what's inside the absolute value. Oops, that should be a 9. What's inside the absolute value bars, and we're going to make this into two inequalities. So the first one, we keep everything the same. We just remove the, or the absolute value symbols. The second inequality, we're going to say is 10x minus 9. We reverse the inequality symbol, and we take the opposite of the value on the right-hand side. Then we just solve each of these um, as, as though this were a regular inequality. So 10x is greater than 24. Divide by 10. I get x is greater than 24 over 10, which is 12 over 5. On the right-hand side, I'm going to say 10x is less than negative 15 plus 9 is negative 6. Divide by 10, we get x is less than negative 6 tenths, which is reduced to negative 3 fifths. All right, so um, we have two separate inequalities here. Now, I'm just going to take the one on the left, put it on the number line, and take the one on the right and put it on the same number line. So this first one, x is greater than 12 fifths. Well, 12 fifths is on the positive side. Greater than, so I have a parenthesis. If we're greater than 12 fifths, we're going to the right. And then x is less than negative 3 fifths. Less than is going to be to the left of negative 3 fifths. All right, so there's two sections on the number line. This, is, this means we're going to have two parts uh, for the... Uh, two parts for the interval notation. So this first one, we're going to say negative infinity up to negative 3 fifths. Put a parenthesis there. On the second section, I'm going to say from 12 fifths to 
to positive infinity. So we have two parts of the interval um, here. So how we uh, write this as a single solution or a single interval, we're going to say negative infinity to negative three-fifths. What we do is we use this symbol. This is called a union symbol. And then we say from 12 fifths to positive infinity. Okay, so this symbol right here is kind of like a capital U. We call this a union. All right, so um, we combine two parts of the interval notation in this way with a union symbol. And one last thing to say about this union symbol in web work, we're just going to use to get this union symbol. All we do is we type in a capital U. Um, on the keyboard. So parenthesis, negative infinity, comma, negative three-fifths, parenthesis, and then capital U, and then write the second uh, part of the interval. All right, so this is a third question that uh, we see in the homework. I think this is the very last one, number 14. All right, so this is called a compound inequality when we have uh, two inequality symbols. So what we do is we're trying to solve for x here. So first thing we would do to solve for x, imagine that this is not even here. If we're just looking at the left side, well, what we would do is we just subtract 3 from each side and then divide by positive 5. Well, what we're going to do is I'm going to subtract 3 from each of these positions, but I'm also going to subtract it on the right. So I subtract 3 from kind of each section of the inequality. So we get negative 8 less than 5x less than or equal to 10. And then to get x by itself, we divide by 5. So I divide by 5 in each position. So I get negative 8 fifths less than x less than or equal to 2. All right, so again, if we want to write um, or graph this on a number line, let's just take it piece by piece. We can think of this as 8 fifths less than x and x less than or equal to 2. So on the number line, this left side, well, we have... This is saying x is greater than negative 8 fifths. Well, negative 8 fifths is on the negative side. If I'm going greater, I'm going to do a parenthesis, and I'm going to the right. Now, this second inequality, this is saying x is less than or equal to positive 2. Now I'm going to use a bracket because we have less than or equal to. Then I'm going to shade down here. So what's happening is our solutions are anywhere in between here. So any number that's in between negative 8 fifths and 2 makes up the solution set. So if we wanted to write this in interval, in interval notation, we would say from negative 8 fifths, let's do a better 5, negative 8 fifths, not including negative 8 fifths, so we put a parenthesis, up to and including 2, so we write a bracket.